In this tutorial, we're going to use the Part Design Workbench to model a house sign. So to start, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to save it. I'm then going to switch to the Part Design Workbench. I'm going to create a body and create the first sketch. I'm going to select the XY plane and click OK. So for this sketch, I'm going to use the Polyline tool. I'm going to select the sketch datum as the first point, then model a line in the Y direction, a line in the X direction, then I'll stop here to draw an arc by pressing M on the keyboard until we get to the arc, internal arc um, feature. I'll left click to position the arc and press M on the keyboard again to cycle back to the line. I'll then complete the sketch by selecting two more lines to close the sketch and then press escape to close the polyline tool. I now start to constrain the sketch by selecting the vertical edge and giving it a vertical constraint of 75 millimeters, the horizontal edge and giving that a dimension of 150 millimeters. I'll then use the horizontal tool to position the center of the arc by selecting the two nodes and choosing horizontal constraint. And then I'll do the same in the vertical direction. So now we need to give the arc a dimension. So we'll select the arc and give it a radius of 35 millimeters. And we can now see the sketch has turned green and there's uh, no unconstrained features. So we'll close the sketch. We'll fit the view and we'll save. So with the sketch complete, we'll now go ahead and pad um, the sketch to create the first 3D geometry and we'll leave that at 10 millimeters. So the sketch and the pad um, represent one quarter of the uh, total sign. So to create the rest of the sign, we can go ahead and select the multi-transform feature. We can see that the pad's been selected as the feature to transform and then we can add the transformations. We want to add a mirror transformation on the vertical axis and then we want to add a mirror transformation on the horizontal axis. Click OK and then I'll click OK to close the transform tool, fit the view and save. So the next step is to add some text to the sign. So to do that I'm going to switch to the draft workbench uh, the draft workbench is used for creating 2D elements and on this we're going to select the top plane and set our working grid. I'm then going to select the shape string tool. I'm going to select a font. So I'm using Linux. So for me that is in USR, share, fonts, true type fonts that I'm going to select the free font. This step might be different for you depending on what platform you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and select that text. I'm then going to type house number into the string entry box. I'm then going to set the coordinates to zero and then press tab to jump to the next box. Zero and leave this one at 10. So I'm going to click OK. Orbit round a bit, we can see the grid. We can see the text. I'm going to type G R to get rid of the grid. I'm then going to switch back to the part design workbench. I'm going to select the top face. 
and use map sketch to face tool to map the shape string to the top face of the sign. Click OK. I'm going to use the suggested flat face attachment method. I'm then going to switch to the plan view and fit and save. I'd now like to position the text and create a pocket. Um, so to do that, I'm going to orbit round a bit using the mouse wheel. I'm going to measure the height of the text. So it's 17.28 millimeters. We can then position the text using the data tab. So in position, under Y, I'm going to use an expression of minus 17.28 divided by two. Click OK. And that's position the text in the Y direction. And then for the X direction, I'm going to do just, just the same thing. Use the measure tool, measure from the extreme left-hand side to the extreme right-hand side of the text. That's 158.32. So in the data tab for the X direction, we can move the text by minus 158.32 divided by two. Click OK. If we select a different cell now, we will see the text move. And with that done, we can delete the dimension. Switch to the top view and save. For the text position, the next step is now to use the shape string to create a pocket. However, if we go ahead and select the shape string and select the pocket tool, we'll be presented with an error. So this warning is telling us that the uh, shape string is not part of the active body. So if we go ahead and click cancel, and we can make it part of the active body by pressing and holding the left mouse button on the shape string and dragging and dropping it onto the body. If we notice it, the icon shifts to the right, aligned with all the other parts of the body. And if we go ahead and select the shape string again, select pocket, and then we'll give it a dimension of two and a half millimeters and choose OK. And switch to an isometric view, fit and save. So with the basic form of the sign complete, I'd now like to start detailing the sign. So to do that, I'm going to create a new sketch. I'm going to select the XZ plane. And what I'd like to create here is an inverse fillet. So to do that, I'm going to select the existing geometry, switch back to the front view, and then sketch a circle and constrain it to three millimeters. With that done, I'm going to close the sketch, save. I'm then going to select the negative sweep tool. The negative sweep tool works by extruding a shape along a given path and then removing the material. Um, so we've already got the shape in the sketch that we've defined, and then the path is defined by using add edge and walking around our shape and selecting all the edges that we'd like um, the shape to follow. So we're gonna go ahead and pick all the edges. If we zoom in and look at the path that's been created, um, it's not quite right on the corner. So to correct this, we can choose transformed and then select um, the round corner option. 
and that will create the path as expected. So with that done, I'm going to select OK. And you can see we've now got an inverse fillet that's been created. Um, so I'm going to go to the isometric view, fit, and save. For the final step of this model, I'd like to create a, a second pocket following the perimeter of the um, sign just slightly inset. Uh, to do that, I'm going to select the top face, create a new sketch. So I'm going to start this sketch by selecting the Link to External Geometry tool. I'm going to select one of the existing arcs, press Escape to close the tool, and then draw a new arc, selecting the center of the existing arc and sketch in the rough shape of a, an arc. Press Escape. Then using the line tool, I'm going to sketch a vertical line and a horizontal line. Press escape. Then we'll start to constrain the sketch. We'll give this line here a vertical constraint and then we'll give it some dimensions. So we'll dimension from the bottom of the existing arc to this line with a horizontal dimension of 15 millimeters. And then we'll put a vertical dimension for the top line, 15 millimeters. And then we'll give the arc a radius of 50 millimeters. Okay, so that's fully constrained. With that done, I'm going to click close to exit the sketch and we'll save. So to create the recess, I'm going to use the same um, negative sweep tool as we used before. So this will be the path. So the next thing we need to do is create the shape that we want to uh, recess with. So we'll create a new sketch on the XZ plane. Then we'll link to the external geometry of the sketch we just created. And then sketch a circle and constrain it at three millimeters. The sketch has gone green. We can see it's fully constrained. So we'll click close to exit the sketch and save. And then ensuring we've got sketch three selected which is our circle sketch. I'm going to select the negative sweep. And then the same process that we just used, I'll go around and select each of the edges. So we'll zoom in and check. So we need to change to the uh, rounded corner option. I'll select OK to close the operation. Switch to the top view. Fit and save. Then to complete the recess, I'm going to select the subtractive pipe and add a multi transform feature. As before, I'm going to right click in the transformations and add a mirror. So I'm going to add the mirror first one on the uh, XZ plane. And then add a second one on the YZ plane. Select OK. And then to complete the transform, I'm going to select OK. I'm going to save. And there we have the completed house sign. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If there's anything you'd like to see in future videos, drop a comment below. Thanks for watching.